What's up guys, JV2017 here, and today I am continuing my Fallout 4 pre-release content. We are only two days away from the glorious release of Fallout 4, and I cannot wait. Just a quick reminder guys, this is your number one hub for Fallout 4 content here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned on my channel now and when the game comes out on November 10th. Another quick reminder, I will be live streaming Fallout 4 at 11pm Central Time on November 9th right here on my YouTube channel, and I may start an hour or so earlier with some Fallout 3, so if you're waiting to play the game at 11 when it unlocks or you're going to the midnight release or whatever, or you're unable to grab it at all on launch, feel free to come and hang out with me here on my channel. I will be streaming. Also, if you need to convert to a different time zone, check the description below. And if you can't make it, don't worry, the stream will be automatically uploaded to my channel once it's done. You guys have been asking me what my first character build will be since I started my special stat series, really since I've been doing these Fallout 4 pre-release videos. And now that we've talked about every category and perk in the game, today I am sharing my first character build that I will be using right when the game comes out. You'll see me use this on stream. For my special, I'm going to start out with 3 Strength, 4 Perception, 3 Endurance, 6 Charisma, 6 Intelligence, 3 Agility, and 3 Luck. And if I were to assign a name to this build, I would say this is the first kind of explorer crafting kind of build. I mean, this is the build that will allow me to find everything important that I want to find. I won't be restricted from anything in my first playthrough and allow me to explore settlements and crafting, which are two new systems that I am very excited about. And the only problem with this build is that it is not combat heavy. It doesn't focus on anything combat related. So I will take a few things to alleviate that lack of combat focus, but this is all around, you know, speech, dialogue, charisma, intelligence, you know, being able to get into every location possible. So that's like hacking and, uh, you know, lock picking, and then also being able to really flesh out those settlements and explore all of the crafting options available. Starting with the strength category, the main reason I'm taking this is for the increased carrying weight and the armorer perk. So obviously strength affects your carry weight and melee weapon damage, but this is not really a melee weapon character, so I'm not really worried about, you know, that at all. And I will have a companion to carry extra items for me, so that will also, you know, kind of balance out the fact that I'm not taking a ton in strength. I'm only going three in this category. So really the main reason for me taking three strength is for armor, to be honest. And armor will allow us to have additional armor crafting mods. And like I said, crafting is a big focus for me. So that's why I want to take, you know, three strength for armor. And I probably won't dump any more points to increase training in this category. Again, I will have a companion with me at all times and I expect them to carry more things for me. So that shouldn't be an issue for me at all. Next, I'm only putting four points into perception for the increased weapon accuracy in VATS and then also for access to awareness and the locksmith perks. So, of course, the underlying advantage of perception is it affects your VATS weapon accuracy. That will be useful, but honestly, I'm probably gonna rely on the better gunplay as we know they got you know, a developer from Destiny to come over and kind of tweak and tune their gunplay. So the gunplay I've heard is very good. And so I'm gonna try to rely on that, not too much on VATS, although I still will use VATS. And I think I'm gonna take the awareness perk so I can see resistances of enemies. It sounds like an interesting thing to have, but also it'll help me since I'm not combat focused, I will focus on taking advantage of those enemy resistances. And also really the main reason for four perception is to get locksmith in order to pick locks. I just wanna be able to get into areas to get valuable items. And also I have the option of taking rifleman because you know that's lower down and it'll really be based on my preference. If I like rifles or if rifles are really powerful in the game, I may take rifleman. And I probably won't dump any more points in, you know, to increase my training and perception. There's no higher perception perk that I'm really after. So I'm probably gonna keep it at four. And something I just literally thought of is that the perception bobblehead is very early in the game. So I may knock this down to three and put my extra point in another category. I'm not sure yet, but maybe it's not worth it. You know, if I just want locksmith to go for perception right off the bat. So I may decide to put this down to three and put that extra point somewhere else. For endurance, I'm only taking three points in this category. And the main reason is for the increased total health and for the toughness and life giver perks. So as we know, endurance affects your health and your action point drain from sprinting. But again, I'm mostly taking three endurance for the health and I will probably take toughness for increased damage resistance if I need it from having a hard time staying alive. 
and really the main reason for endurance three is for life giver that just increases my health i'll take that if i need it and really less than two endurance sounds a little dicey i'm not going to be playing on a high difficulty but you know less than you know three endurance doesn't sound great to me i always want to have that you know okay amount of health so i don't get one-shotted by things and i probably won't dump any more points into this category unless i just need more health and hopefully toughness and life giver can give me plenty of that Charisma is really one of the main focuses of this build as I'm taking six points in it right off the bat. And the reasons are for the increased success to persuade in dialogue and also for the cap collector, lady killer and local leader perks. So obviously charisma affects your success to persuade and you get better prices at vendors. And I've actually seen someone talk about the dialogue in the game and how it works. So certain charisma options that you have available the yellow ones, you're gonna, it'll have yellow text and kind of the yellow button for which one you need to choose. Yellow is the easy options, orange is the medium options, and red is the hard options. So the higher the charisma, the easier those things will be. I don't know if it'll change the actual color of the text or if you'll know like, hey, I have eight charisma, I can you know successfully get this hard you know uh, dialogue option. I'm not sure how that works, but. I'm taking this mostly for persuasion, not so much the better prices at vendors, but I am taking cap collector for better prices at vendors. And also another side note, someone on Reddit who is already 20 to 30 hours into the game said their biggest mistake was keeping charisma low. And that's that's just huge for me because I, I, you know, from the beginning, I was like, I really want high charisma. So it sounds like high charisma is a good thing or, you know, higher than normal, not low charisma, but, you know, average or better is probably a good idea. So this person also said dialogue options, you know, charisma really affects your options there. And of course it should. Also settlements are huge. Their impact can be huge if you spend your time on them. That's something I wanna do. And then also attack dog apparently is really good. And I'll kind of talk about that in a second. So anyways, the perks that I named that I want to take are cap collector because some of the best items are actually sold by vendors. They said that there was like a 4,000 cap legendary weapon at a vendor and they missed out on it because they didn't have enough caps. And so you can get better prices at vendors with cap collector. So that's why I will be taking that. I'll also take lady killer for that increased damage, just flat increase against you know female human characters. And also the increased dialogue choices. Again, dialogue is a huge important part for me in my first playthrough. So. That's why I'm taking Lady Killer. And then of course, Local Leader will allow me to establish trade networks between my settlements via Brahmin going back and forth, and also more building options within my settlements. So again, settlement crafting and building workshops, that's a huge thing for me. So that's why I'm going um, all the way up to get Local Leader. And I may take Attack Dog if I like dog meat enough. Honestly, there are 11 other companions and I'm probably gonna explore all those options. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to invest like five points for just one companion if I'm not gonna keep it the entire time. So we'll see about that, but I've heard Attack Dog is very good. And I'll probably dump more points to increase training to either eight or nine. Of course, we know we have bobbleheads in the game, so we don't need to increase that you know, to 10. Someone said it goes above 10, but I'm not sure that we get the increased benefit from that. So I'll probably increase mine to eight or nine for better persuasion, you know, being able to pass those dialogue charisma checks and also for inspirational, which will increase my companion damage and also intimidation, which will allow me to pacify and incite others to attack. They sound like very powerful perks. Um, so I'm definitely going to be dumping points into training in order to get those later in the game. Intelligence is probably the second most important category for me, and I'm putting six points here, and I'm doing that for the increased experience points earned and also for the medic, gun nut, hacker, scrapper, and science perks. Pretty much every perk that's either six or below I will be taking. So again, intelligence affects your experience earned every time you complete an action that nets experience. So that's, you know, lock picking, completing a quest, hacking a terminal, all of those things. So beyond perks, having the stat high means you level up and you get perks quicker. Just plain and simple. It just gives you that flat bonus and that's something I really like. I wanna get as many perks as possible, explore as much as the game as possible. So uh, in terms of those perks, I will be probably taking Medic for the effects on health and radiation and stim packs. 
um, as we know, radiation is more important now. It lowers your maximum health. So we're gonna have to get rid of that radiation, and I think that'll be important. I will be taking Gun Nut for the weapon crafting. Again, I wanna explore that, and also for defending settlements. You take Gun Nut and get it to a certain rank, and you'll be able to create a machine gun turret. So that also factors into the reason I'm taking Gun Nut. Again, I'm gonna take Hacker for unlocking terminals. I want all the benefits of unlocking terminals, whether that be information or being able to unlock a certain door that will get me to some valuable items. Again, I wanna be able to get everywhere and everywhere possible in the game. I'm gonna take Scrapper as well for more materials towards crafting. And again, crafting hugely important for me, so I don't wanna to have to go out and get more things than necessary. I'll be able to take Scrapper and just get more materials from the start. And then I'm gonna take science for more crafting with laser-based weapons, and also for defending my settlements. You can make a laser turret if you have a certain amount of science rank as well. So I might take vans if places are difficult to find. That's the intelligence one perk. Um, a lot of people are kind of you know poo-pooing on that perk, saying, oh, you can just find it yourself, but I don't know. I don't know. If I'm having trouble with stuff, I might take vans. That'll just lead me to things more easily. I may decide to dump more points into the intelligence training if chemist is really good or if robotics expert is really good. If I can craft robots to defend my settlements and that's like a really good way to defend your settlements, I'll probably be increasing intelligence to get robotics expert. Next is agility and I'm only taking three points in this category and I'm taking them for the increased action points in VATS and for some combat perk options, nothing in particular. So again, Agility affects your AP in VATS and your sneak ability. So the extra action points will be useful in combat if I decide to use VATS, but I don't really plan on sneaking too much. So that's just kind of an ancillary, you know, extra, you know, advantage there. So less than three agility sounds a little dicey for combat. I just want to have that in my back pocket just in case. I may take the gunslinger or commando perks based on my preference again with the guns. If I like pistols more or you know automatic rifles more, I'll take either one of those. And I really don't plan on dumping more points into agility training unless I'm having some combat issues and I need more you know action points, then I will do so. The final category is luck, and I'm only taking three points here for the increased recharge rate of critical hits, and then for fortune finder, scrounger, and bloody mess. So as we know, luck affects our critical hit meter recharge. This is useful, but again, I'm not super combat heavy focused. I'm focused on other things. And so I will be taking Fortune Finder for more caps if it is worth it. You know, I'm gonna be investing a lot in my settlement and getting a lot of caps. So if I need Fortune Finder, I will take that. And I'll also take Scrounger for more ammo if I need it. Once again, if ammo is plentiful, I probably won't be taking Scrounger, but uh, I have to assume it's not going to be. So I may be taking Scrounger early for more ammo. And then finally, I will take Bloody Mess for that flat damage boost. I mean, if you put three points into Bloody Mess, you have 15% more damage to everything in the game. That seems really useful. And also I like it for its novelty purposes. I want people to explode. And I've always taken Bloody Mess in the past. In the future, I may dump an extra point into Luck to get Mysterious Stranger. Again, I've always been a fan of that perk, but maybe not. Maybe I will have other priorities in my playthrough. So that is my first character build, and I want to know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on my build? What would you change? You know, what would you invest more points into? And also, I want to know what will be your first character build? Um, you know, do you guys have any ideas? Maybe you're going sniper, or melee character. Let me know. Share those in the comment section below. And also, guys, I'm going to be doing a special series, and so I want some ideas from you guys and it's all about fictional characters and what kind of builds they would have. So give me a fictional character, maybe in TV, movie, movies, other video games. Just give me some ideas for you know potential builds where I can just make an entire video and say, this is what you wanna be if you wanna be, say, like Batman, just for example. There's tons of ideas out there. Just share them below, and I will be making those videos when the game comes out. They should be really fun on my channel. All right, guys, today I share what my first character's build will be in Fallout 4. And next time we'll cover more Fallout 4 information here on my channel. So stay tuned for two more videos of my pre-release content. And remember, this is your number one hub for all Fallout 4 content here on YouTube. And also, don't forget, I am live streaming at 11 p.m. Central Time on November 9th, right when the game comes out. So if you guys have some time, feel free to drop by and hang out. And if you need more time zone conversions, check the description below. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for tons of great Fallout 4 content when the game comes out on November 10th. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.